Hey everybody, I want to welcome you to our series that we're doing on Sunday night called Building Strong Families in Uncertain Times. And I think that all of you would agree that we are living in uncertain times and we need to build strong families. So I'm really thankful for those of you that have made the decision to journey with us and to stay connected with us through this time. And so tonight, I am so thankful that here we are, Valentine's Day, uh, right here upon us. And what a great time to focus on family. I hope that you and your family are taking the opportunity as we do these, uh, these sessions that you're taking time after that to spend some time to talk and discuss uh, the different aspects of the session that we're going to be bringing to you. So today, let's bow together and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity we have, Lord, to study your word. And I pray, God, that you would minister to our families. God, we are so grateful here at Eden Westside that we have so many wonderful families that uh, attend the church and are connected with this ministry. And I pray your richest blessings upon them. Lord, we are trying our best to focus on building strong families in uncertain times. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us with that and uh, guide us and direct us. Be with me now as we talk and share in this very special topic that we're going to be discussing tonight. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been on this journey for the last few weeks, and tonight I'm really excited about uh, the topic that we're going to be discussing. It's talking about the fire in a marvelous marriage. What a uh, what a wonderful title it is uh, as we look at Valentine's Day and building that love relationship and that connection. And again, let me emphasize the, the thought, building the, the fire in a marvelous marriage. And uh, man, that, that's a good title, the fire in a marvelous marriage. So today, why is it, why is it that a large majority of marriages fizzle before the finish. A lot of couples in their marriage have lost the fire of their marriage. No young couple that I know starts off in marriage with the ultimate goal to fail. No young couple has ever walked in my office and said, we want to get married so that we can be miserable <laughs> and uh, learn to hate each other and end up in a divorce. Nobody ever does that. Nobody ever walks in and goes, hey, I want to start this thing and uh, we want to get married so that we can just be a miserable person the rest of our life. But yet, uh, that is the sad conclusion of many couples. They get married <coughs> and they, uh, they start their journey together and they end up just miserable in life. And even yet, there are other couples who have decided that rather than be a part of a divorce statistic, that they'll just stick it out even though they are miserable. They're not divorced. They are the I'm stuck couple. That's right. They're the, they got this mindset. I'm just stuck. You know, I'm married. I got kids. They're miserable. They're unhappy. Here, here's the question, y'all. What takes the fire out of the marriage? And I, I always tell people this. The fire that fizzles before the finish was faulty from the first. The fire that fizzles before the finish was faulty from the first. Some questions to ponder. What is fire in a marriage? Is fire in the marriage only sexual? What do you do when the fire fizzles? How do you maintain the fire in your marriage? Wh Here, here's the other one. What's it like being married to you? <laughs> you know, when you think about all these questions, you... Uh, you have to ask yourself some very important thoughts as we look at this. So I want you to take your Bible with me, and I want you to open your copy of God's Word to the book of Genesis, and we're going to read three different passages of Scripture tonight in three different books of the Bible just to kind of launch us out and, uh, and see what happens here. So Genesis chapter 1, verse number 27 through 31. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God 
bless them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the field, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw that everything he had made, and behold, it was, watch this, very good, and the evening and the morning were the, were the sixth day. Notice, God created this. God blessed them. God gave uh, this couple, man and woman, uh, he gave them permission to be fruitful and multiply, and, and then he said, this is very good. Now, marriage in covenant with God is he has, he's given the blessing. He said, this is good. Be fruitful and multiply. Enjoy your life together. And by the way, as you're doing this, he just puts the stamp of approval on it in verse number 31. And he says, it was very good. Now, as we look at that, uh, that means that God ordained the covenant of marriage. And he said, man, this is supposed to be very good. Now, a lot of people look at that and they go, well, what happened to our marriage? Why is it not very good? Where's the fire? It's fizzled. I don't understand. I'm just stuck. Well, let's, let's learn some things together. Let's look over there to Hebrews 13, 4. It says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Now, what does that mean? It means that God honors the marriage bed. The intimacy of the marriage God honors. So God has already said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you permission to have a great life. I want you to be fruitful and multiply. I'm going to honor the marriage bed because it's in covenant and everything is very good. Everything that we're looking for is very good in the marriage. And then in 1 Corinthians 7, 1, 9, Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the husband, the wife to the husband. The wife has not power over her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband has not power over his his own body, but the wife, defraud ye not one another, except it be with a, a consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency, but I speak this by permission, and uh, not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I was, but every man has his proper gift, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it's good for them that they should abide even as I, but if they cannot contain themselves, let them marry, for it's better to marry than to burn. Now, <clears throat> Paul is saying here that... Uh, the, the the husband's body belongs to the wife. The wife's body belongs to the husband. There's so much to teach here uh, in relation to uh, building and sustaining the fire in the marriage. And so when we think about this fire in the marriage, it's a, it's a lot more than just sex. I believe it's called being one. Uh, that's what it's all about. And that's what fire in a marriage is all about, being one. Sex, intimacy, conversation, decisions, money, activity, hobbies, you name it, the list goes on. All of that is what's called doing life together. Write that down. Marriage, how do you develop fire in a marriage in this in a, in making a marvelous marriage? You learn to do life together. That encompasses and embraces every area of that. That's what keeps a fire in a marriage, doing life together. That's what you learn to do in this marriage. And you have to realize that that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to do life together. Not one of you doing one thing, another doing something else, but learning how to do this life together is a beautiful thing. 
and it involves everything, everything. And so when we think about this, I, 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 I find so many couples that go, Brother Jackie, our marriage has fizzled. Uh, there's just no fire in the marriage. Uh, I'm just stuck. I don't know what to do. Well, that's not God's plan for your marriage is just to be stuck. And he, his plan for your marriage is not for you to lose the fire in the marriage. The fire in a marvelous marriage is a beautiful thing. And that fire encompasses every part of your life. It's doing life together. Every piece of it matters. So today, what I want to do is I want to talk about dangers. The dangers that you need to look for that's going to quench the fire in your marriage. And so I hope you'll get a notepad and, and write some of this stuff down because I believe that every, no matter where you are on the journey of your marriage, no matter if you're a newlywed or you've been married like Denise and I for 45 years, I believe all this stuff is true. It, it, it's, it remains the same. you got to keep stoking that fire, building that fire in that marriage so that you can have a very good life together. So let's talk about the dangers that I want you to be aware of as we navigate through uh, the waters of marriage. What are some of the dangers? So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you about four things. Uh, uh, things tonight that I want you to write down. So let's look at danger number one. Be aware of danger number one. I, I hear this one over and over and over again. Be aware of danger number one. And this is what I hear over and over and over again. Here it is. We just drifted apart. That's a danger, guys. It's a subtle move away from what God intended. Now, in order to accomplish this drifting apart thing, I believe that there are four things that causes couples to drift apart. And I'm going to give you these four things. Now, these are vitally important for you uh, as we think about this. Now, before I give you these four things, let me, let's turn our attention to Mark chapter 10 and verse number 6. Mark chapter 10 and verse number 6. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh, so that they are no more two, but now they're one. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Now that word asunder uh, means to be divided. And so when you're drifting apart, that's what's happening is that you are doing the exact opposite of what God tells us. Don't let yourself drift apart. And I believe that there are four things that, that causes couples to drift apart. So write these down. The first one is neglect. You begin to neglect each other, taking each other for granted. Uh, you neglect uh, the importance of that that focal point on your husband and you or your wife you you start neglecting them now you don't mean to do it up front you just kind of you say well, well I'll get to him or her later or you know what we'll do that later or why are we too busy you know neglect neglect causes people to drift apart write that down secondly distraction we get distracted in our journey of the marriage. And when you get distracted, you'll start drifting apart from your husband. Now, distraction can be a million different things. But when you get distracted, you remember when you were dating, you, you were, your focus was on, on, on your spouse-to-be. Uh, uh, you were focused on them. You, spent, you, were, you were not distracted from them, but you were attracted to them. So I believe that neglect, distraction. Here's the third one busyness. We just get too busy. Uh, we get too busy with everything else in life. And busyness causes us to drift apart. And then the fourth one is selfishness. Not thinking about your spouse's need, but rather always focusing on yourself. Selfishness. And I find that those four things uh, happen in couples that, that I talk to that say, well, we just drifted apart. When we start layering this thing, we go, well, how did you start drifting apart? Inevitably, uh, the statements are always going to come back to those four. Well, we started neglecting each other. Well, we got distracted. Well, we got busy with life. Well, we just got selfish. 
And when you look at that, that's exactly what happens in marriages when the fire begins to fizzle. Uh, they they get they neglect each other. They get distracted. They start or they're too busy. Uh, they uh, they're selfish with their own lives, and you cannot do that. Uh, trust me, if you start allowing those four things to happen in your marriage, I promise you, you're going to start drifting apart, and the fire is going to begin to fizzle. Now let's look at the second thing, and that is this: beware of danger number two, and that is little foxes little foxes. Now, uh, this is important because uh, when you study over a song of Solomon, if you want to take your Bible, look over there uh, in chapter two, this is what the song of Solomon says. O my dove, thou art in the clefts of the rock in the secret place of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear your voice for sweet is your voice and thy countenance is comely. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Did you know, I'm convinced, that it's not the big things that weakens the marriage. The big things like loss of a job, sudden illness, death of a loved one. These things to me seem to deepen the marital relationship. But rather it's the little things that begin to eat away at the marriage. The slow leaks, not the blowouts. I find that in marriages that fall apart and the fires fizzle, it's that slow leak uh, on, on, in, in the marriage. It's not the blowouts that cause the, the problem. It's the slow leak. The little pest, the little termites that eat away without hardly even noticing them until it's too late, and then bam, another family crumbles. So if you want to maintain fire in your marriage, you must develop a deep love, a deep love. It's bigger than sex. It's bigger than, <clears throat> than all these things. And you've got to watch these little uh, foxes that get in your marriage. Now trust me, I'm telling you, it's like the hidden termites that get into a house, you don't see them until there's major league damage done. And what I have found is when you look at dangers that causes the fire to get out of a marriage, it's the little foxes. Boy, they sneak in, don't they? They know how to sneak in and, and they'll destroy the vines, the tender vines of your love that you have for your, uh, your husband or your wife. You have to realize that <clears throat> the devil... He is so sneaky and clever. See, he doesn't want you. He doesn't want your marriage wrecked by a big blowout. That normally doesn't happen. It just happens with a slow leak. I can't tell you how many couples that I've talked to over the years of ministry that just says we drifted apart, brother Jackie. Uh, we started taking each other for granted. We were distracted. We got too busy. We got selfish. And, uh, well, how did that happen? Well, we just let these little things just eat away at our marriage. And that's what happens. And before long, you look up and you go, man, there's no fire in our relationship. We're just kind of coexisting. We're just kind of there. Uh, we, we're just stuck. And what a terrible place to be in a marriage. So let me quickly give you some things. And I want to I say this to you. And I want you to write this down if you didn't get the outline and, and I think this is so important uh, in, in how, do you, how do you make sure that you keep this fire in the marriage. And that is, how do you spell love? How do you spell love? You know the dangers are there. You're probably already going, Brother Jake, you got me. You punched me in the gut already. Uh, maybe some of you are going, that's where we are in our relationship. And the fire is gone. We're just kind of here. We're kind of stuck. How do we rekindle it? Well, the first, you got to know how to spell love. And I use a little acronym uh, with this. And the acronym is the acronym TIME, uh, just T-I-M-E. And I think if you'll listen to me and you'll apply these truths, uh, you, you will understand that, that this little acronym is a beautiful acronym of how you spell love. So let's look at, just go ahead and write T-I-M-E down 
and we'll put a word out beside each letter. And I think that'll give you a good indication of how you can really start regrouping a little bit. So the first one, the T, is time. Spend quality time together. Most people don't have much quality time, but, they t but you, you take the time that you have with each other and you make it quality. You say, oh, I don't have a lot of time. We'll make the time that you have with each other quality time. Now listen, you need to listen to me. When you are there, be there. When you are there, be there. When you're together, be together. Now I know we're living in a busy world. There's all kinds of things pulling at us, but it's not so much the quantity of time that we use, but the quality of time and, and time is so important. And I think that I could just box you in by saying, when you're there, be there. Uh, when you're together, be together. Do you want to know what I see robbing people of their together time more than anything? No, don't, don't get mad at me. I, I'm just trying to help you here. Uh, I see <clears throat> this robbing people uh, more than anything. You know, this, this little thing called a phone. And on this phone, rather than being there with your spouse or being together when you have an opportunity to be together, we're right here, guys. And, and, and I know you know that. Listen, put this down. Look at her. Look at him. Be focused on them. Engage together. Get this out of your hand somewhere. Look, this all can wait, y'all. Put down your control box for your game. Get rid of all that. Give each other quality time. Set up a date night together. You say, well, now wait a minute, Brother Jay. We ain't got no money. Well, build a fire outside. Roast a hot dog. Uh, roast some marshmallows. Look at the stars together. It don't cost a lot of money to buy a pack of weenies and a hot dog bun and some marshmallows. Just build a fire, roast some mar marshmallows, cook a, cook a hot dog, and just look up the stars. Just spend some time together. Have a date night. Enjoy time together. Set it up. Spend that time. And then the I is intimacy. Uh, you asked a guy, guy uh, hey, you asked a dude, what is intimacy? He's going to immediately refer, oh, it's sex. You asked a girl, and she's going to give you a different answer. What is intimacy? So here we go. We have to have intimacy together. Uh, you know, look at each other's eyes. Hold hands together. Go for a walk. Have moments together without just sexual contact. But yes, sex is a big part of that. That's why Corinthians says, as we read, that you're not to defraud each other. Yeah, you need to have time together, but make the whole thing a part of intimacy. Enjoy the journey of intimacy, but develop that. Make that happen. Find out what each other's love language is. Build the intimacy together. And yes, enjoy each other. The Bible says the marriage bed is honorable uh, in the marriage bed. Enjoy each other. God said, he told Adam and Eve, look, I want you to go and multiply and replenish the earth. He was saying, hey, I give you permission to have intimacy and enjoy your time together between the husband and the wife. What a beautiful, beautiful time. Make sure you do that. And then the M of how do you spell love is mutual respect. Um, wish I had a lot of time to talk about that, but, but learn to mutually respect each other. Talk to each other, not at each other learn to talk to each other, mutually respecting each other. Uh, that M is mutual respect. Give each other that mutual respect that you need. And then E is effort. You know, put some effort into it. Learn the love languages. Um, enjoy this. Look, <clears throat> look the E is effort. Put some effort into your time together. You know, when you, when you were dating, you, you, uh, you, you spent some time getting ready to present yourself to, uh, to this person that you said you loved. Take a bath. <coughs> Put on some deodorant. Brush your teeth. Dress nice. 
when you were dating, you put forth an effort to do all those things. And look, fix yourself up. Um, uh, take some pride in yourself in presenting yourself to your husband and to your wife. Uh, make it a special night together. Put some candlelights on the table. Uh, enjoy that time. Uh, don't lose that in your journey of life. If you do, the fire goes out. Put the effort together. It's like, well, I've tried it. didn't work. I don't know. Look, try it again. Just surprise them. Put some effort together to surprise your spouse, and, and you'll be glad you did. So how do you spell love? Time. What is that? Time, intimacy, mutual respect, and effort. And then I wanted to talk to you about how to have the best marriage real quick. And I want to give you another acronym that I believe is important. I'm going to give it to you quickly. Write the word BEST, B-E-S-T. Now, we've already did the acronym TIME on how do you spell love, but I want to teach you how to have a best marriage, B-E-S-T. All right, are you ready? So the B is blessings, blessings. Speak well to your spouse. Do kind things. Express thankfulness and appreciation verbally. Pray with your spouse daily. Bless your spouse. Speak blessings over them. Encourage them with blessings. And then the E is edifying. Give them praise. Build them up. Say things that reinforce self-worth to them. Find good things to edify your spouse. And then the S is sharing. Share time. Share activity. Share interest. Share your day. Share your life. And then the T is touching. That's the physical contact. It's essential. Hold the hand. Touch. Encourage. Be there. Touch your spouse. You will, if you do that, now remember uh, how to have the best marriage, blessings, edifying, sharing, and touching. And, uh, you know, there's so much I could tell you about that. They tell me I have a, a little bit of time on the air like this with you. But I think that we've got to make sure that we want to have fire in our marriage. And that fire is a wonderful thing that you are to have in a marvelous marriage. You can have a marvelous marriage, but you got to keep stoking that fire. And again, let me remind you, it doesn't matter where you are on the journey. Uh, you got to keep doing that. But this is what you want in life. You don't want to just get stuck in a marriage. You want to have a great marvelous marriage. And you can do that by continuing to build the fire in that relationship. And then the last thing I want to tell you is you may be in a situation where, uh, where you're going, well, I don't know what to do or we don't know what to do. Let me, let me just encourage you here. Don't quit. Uh, here's my bottom line today. Don't be too proud to ask for help. You know, when you look at relationships and couples, sometimes we think, well, oh my gosh, what's everybody going to think about us if we, if we have to ask somebody to help us? Don't be too proud to ask for help. We all need help along the journey. Let me assure you of this. It's better to ask for help than to end up in a divorce and a miserable marriage. Uh, wherever you are, ask for help. There are people that are willing to help you. We're willing to help you. You give us a call and let us know you need some help. We'll be more than happy to do everything we can do uh, to help you, not judge you, but to help you. Look, we've all been there. Uh, Denise and I have been married 45 years, and we've been through ups and downs. We've had the challenges. We've had to have help. Uh, we've had to swallow our pride and go, man, we've got we to gotta reboot this thing. And so as you look at your life together, don't be afraid to ask for help. Well, I'm glad you tuned in. I hope some of this stuff is helping you. I'd love to hear from you if it is helping you and uh, kind of give me your thoughts. But maybe you and your spouse need to go somewhere now and talk about some of this stuff. Maybe you got a nugget or something. Maybe you just need to sit down and just discuss the outline tonight. I think it'd be good for you. So God bless you. I'll see you next time.